Welcome, Professor Roshan. Thanks for coming and being with us in this campus, uh, your own campus, I know. And uh, you have been a stalwart here in the area of foundry, spent a large number of years. I heard that 67 you came here. Uh, and I would like to know, first of all, about your, uh, what brought you to IIT Madras? Okay. Professor Murthy, I wish to thank you very much. I wish to thank you. I wish to thank Mamata and uh, Kumaran and Rajaraman for giving me an opportunity to speak to you today. I'm really very happy to talk to you and uh, whatever uh, questions which thank I have got. You, you asked me you. about uh, what brought me here. I'll tell you briefly about uh, my background and how yes. I came over here. We would here. like to know about your background education before coming to IIT Madras and then what really motivated you to come here and then did wonderful work, I know that. We will come to that a little later. Yes, Professor. Uh, when I completed my high school, it was called SSLC. Now it is not, no longer there. So I completed my SSLC where in 1957. Professor? Where where was that? Which in place? Markapur. There is one uh, town ah, in Karnul yes, district, correct. Markapur. And uh, then uh, my mother and my dad, uh, they sent me to Layla College, uh, Vijayawada. Vijayawada Andhra Layla College. I know. So I went Incidentally, there. I studied in a college which was just adjacent to that. There is a government polytechnic next to Andhra Layla College and I did my diploma in that polytechnic, just for I, your information. Yeah. I know that it is yeah, Gunadala, yeah. I know about Wonderful. the polytechnic. I mean, also. very well known place, Laila College. Yeah. Everybody talks about it. So, 50, at this time, there was no, uh, the plus two was not there. Okay. So, it was the PUC. PUC, correct. So, that was my the last batch of the PUC. PUC. I did my PUC, I got, uh, uh, then. Uh, I applied for engineering colleges. Okay. I was underage, so uh -huh. they could, I could not get into <laughs> engineering college. Uh -huh. So I had to do one year of uh, BA over B. there. Okay. So and then and uh, then 58 I completed. Okay. And uh, then uh, uh, I applied for engineering college. At that time, uh, in Tirupati, University College of Engineering they uh -huh. started. Uh -huh. So S V University College. Yes, first batch. Uh -huh. I belong to the first batch of Sri Venkatesra University College Was of Engineering. Was that the first engineering college in Andhra, sir? No. Anantapur, are, Anantapur is Anantapur. another engineering college. Okay. There is a government engineering. But what about Vijag? Andhra University was not there those days? There is Andhra University. There uh -huh. is separate. So, so you, you belong to Vijayawada, that area? Correct. So, okay. Correct. Uh -huh. so, so I got a seat there. Uh -huh. So 1959 to 1963. Okay. That was four years? No, it was four actually years. five years. It's uh -huh. a five-year program. Okay. And uh, I heard those days it used to be always five years. Five years. What happened was uh, at that time the Indochina war was there, so accelerated course. We graduated instead of in normally in uh, June, uh, we graduated in December 1963 okay. itself. Uh -huh. So we graduated in December and uh, then uh, the uh, master's degree, they will not open uh, until the next June. Okay. Then uh, we went and uh, there was a, our principal, the special officer called Sir Ram Krishnan, he said, okay, now you have completed this one, would you be interested in teaching? Oh. So I joined immediately wow. uh, <laughs> as an associate lecturer in uh -huh. mechanical engineering in uh, SEO College of Engineering. Okay. I did for about six months. Then at that time, uh, Indian Institute of Science, foundry engineering was very, very uh, sought after hmm. course for the students. Under mechanical engineering department. Under mechanical engineering department. They Great have people were there, you know, Professor Seshadri, Seshan, I mean, who, with whom you worked there, Professor? So, uh, I worked with Professor M. N. Srinivasan, but how I went to in, uh, uh, Bangalore is, in those days, the admissions of uh, master's degree, there was no entrance gate, exam, no gate, gate, nothing was there. The mm. only criterion is, you should be first rank holder in the university. Wow. So so every first rank holder, if he applies, he will get it. Elite so, group of the country eh, sitting there, wonderful. You are one of those. Only 10, only 10 students. Ah. Only 10 students. All stu 10 were toppers of some university. All, oh. I, be, I belong to SV University. Okay. Then uh, there was a, on um, the Madras University, two people, Usman University, one person, Benares. Like that, we were 10 oh, people. Wonderful. Huh? So that's how I went to uh, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Yeah. The head of the, there, the foundry science was in mechanical engineering. Okay. Head of the department is uh, Professor E. Ramachandran. Ramachandra. So, on the first day when you go, you go and meet the head of the department. That is the normal protocol mm -hmm. practice. When you enter the room, he will say, come in Mr. Roshan, he will say. Uh -huh. We will wonder, how does he know my name? For the hero? He didn't <laughs> see me for the first time. He is asking. Before we come, he reads everybody's, uh, uh, etc., etc. Uh -huh. 
Well, and uh, then that's how I joined the foundry. Then Professor Seshadri Professor was. Seshadri. Uh, he taught me. So Paris Professor Foundry. Seshadri and Professor Malur Srinivas mm -hmm. and Professor Mandyam Srinivas. Mandyam Srinivas. So I did my uh, the master's work mm -hmm. with Professor Mandyam Srinivas. Mm -hmm. So two years were over. Mm -hmm. There was also one uh, aluminium foundry professor K S S Srinivas Murthy. Murthy, yeah. Professor, he was Srinivas also Murthy. he also taught us. Yeah. Professor Seshan, Professor Mandiam yeah. Srinivasan, yeah. yeah. Professor Seshadri. Yeah. So Professor Seshadri was, yes. uh, although yeah. I did not do my masters, but still he is yeah. a he, he is a wonderful taught. teacher. Wonderful so teacher, right. I was uh, always uh, associated. That was a two-year program, professor. Two years program. Okay. Those days it was. Now I possibly you are aware that now masters became one and a half year. Uh, when I did my masters, it was one and a half. Then again, now it came back to two years. No, no, it no. was uh, not uh, uh, one and a half. It was two years. Mm -hmm. So it was 1964 and 1966. Mm -hmm. Then, <coughs> when we take the advice of the head of the department, Professor A. Ramchandran, he says, "If you're a foundry engineer, you should work in an industry. No, uh, no academics. No academics, <laughs> etc." So then, uh, where are the jobs? There are no jobs in uh, uh, everywhere. So they say. Go to uh, Bombay, there are jobs. We took a ticket, just took it, sat in the train, went to Bombay. At that time, to search for a job. So then what happened was, uh, then you... No go, campus interviews, nothing those days. No campus interviews, yeah. nothing. Okay. <coughs> so now then... Things are all uh, different. <laughs> then uh, you should see in the newspaper day in the, daily in the morning, yeah. and uh, then uh, try to find out his advertisement. Then first I went to a die casting uh, mm. uh, found. So even at the University of Science, uh, I passed with a uh, with distinction. distinction. Again, I got the first rank, first rank. in uh, in the M Tech, ME. ME. And uh, then I got a uh, one person in die casting foundry. He offered me a job, mm. but it was a small shop. Then uh, there is another company called New Standard Engineering Company, Bombay. Mm -hmm. It is a iron foundry mm -hmm. with a Polish collaboration. And uh, then about uh, uh, 400 tons of grey iron, mm. and the maximum weight of the casting is 20 tons. So they also make uh, the induction furnaces, tagliaferri induction furnaces. Mm. And uh, I went there and uh, took the interview, mm -hmm. and they said, "Okay, we'll give you a job." So I got the job. So you spent just looks like only one year. Was it very hard job? That's what made you come to academics immediately. 67, you came to. IIT Madras, I know. Yeah. So 66 to 67, just one year uh, in that this was, foundry. That was due to my personal reasons, uh -huh. in the sense uh, when I was doing my masters, my dad passed away. Uh -huh. Okay. So then what happened was uh, then my mother was in, uh, so she was. So uh, you need uh, to she, take care of her. I was to, I had to take her. So she was ill. So 1967, my mother passed away. Oh. So I had to. Uh, okay. uh, shift my place from uh, Bombay. So you came back to closer to Andhra. Clo then what happened was uh, uh, I came down to my Karno where my mother mm -hmm. was there when she mm -hmm. passed away. Then I resigned my job in uh, the Bombay, mm -hmm. but I need a job. That's true. So there are two uh, openings are there. Indian Institute of Science Bangalore, a lecturer's post. Okay. And uh, then uh, Indian Institute of Technology was the associate lecturer's post. I applied for both of them. Mm. And then what happened was uh, I got an interview in Indian of Science Bangalore. So I was about to go over there, but uh, my mother was sick. So I said, I will not go. So, so I, you missed the interview? I missed the interview. Okay. But that was a, it was good for me. That was a blessing for IIT <laughs> Madras. I mean, we got you. That's it, it, amazing, it, it amazing a, to hear that. It, it was a good for me too. Yeah. And then uh, what happened was I came over here and I attended the interview. Okay. Uh, and yeah. then uh, during the interview for Sarija Ramachandran, they were there. Uh -huh. So, associate lecturer, some true, true, true. 500 rupees uh, <laughs> uh, job, etc. Then uh, they offered, then uh, they asked me, okay, you are qualified, uh, because lecturer is only master's degree. There's no PhD requirement, oh, requirement in, in those yes. days. Yeah. So they said, uh, why did we, we had interviews recently for uh, uh, the lecturer's, lecturer's post. post. Why did you not apply? I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So, why don't you offer me a lecturer's post? Yeah. No, 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 you cannot, we cannot offer, offer you because we advertised only for us. I did Madras goes by advertisement. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, with the next advertisement, come to apply and take your chance. Okay, so I got uh, in 1967 September, I got my uh, associate lecturer's job. Mm -hmm. 
I came over here. That was the best thing that has happened to me. <laughs> And uh, then Professor E.J. Ramachandran was the head of the department. He was mm -hmm. very nice to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, then when Professor Surn was there, mm -hmm. so uh, at that time, Germans were there in the, mm -hmm. all the... I uh, heard that, right. I so heard Professor, that. So coordinator, although he's, uh, Professor Surn belongs to welding, mm -hmm. but still he was in the metallurgy department. Okay. So he was coordinating uh, the... Foundry uh, activities. Uh, foundry activities, etc. Mm -hmm. So that's how... Mm -hmm. I came to IIT. Mm -hmm. So that's the answer to your question is how yes, I came to IIT. Then wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. Was there anybody else along with you in the foundry area those days? Professor O. Prabhakar, for example, he joined after you or much later? No, uh, he joined in later because 70, mm -hmm. uh, 67 I joined, mm -hmm. then uh, 68 there was again, as I told you, there was another advertisement for lecturers, mm. okay, in the six, in six months, I became a lecturer. In mm. Professor Prabhakar, he joined immediately, okay. later, one so, year, one year so later. The foundry division or foundry research activity or teaching come research activity started with you here? At that time, when I joined in 67, there was no master's program in foundry at all. Uh -huh. There's nothing, no, it was all about uh, the physical method, very strong in physical method. Like Professor Vasudevan, Professor Vasudevan, Professor Srinivas, Srinivas Raghavan, Professor Ijira himself, they're all physical metallurgists. Correct, correct, correct. So, but Professor Ijira Ramachandran, he had a vision mm. that uh, industrial metallurgy is a sure, sure, sure. I was the only person sure, who sure. had a master's degree in foundry. Mm. So, I knew the program of uh, how to write the syllabus. It's not uh -huh. a simple thing uh -huh. to write the syllabus for all uh -huh. the... Uh -huh. So, we started a industrial metallurgy industrial with, with three M different... M-Tech, M-E, in, -E. uh, in those days, master, M-E. Okay. Oh, still, they used to call it as M-E here. M -E. Uh -huh. No, here M-Tech, M -tech. sorry. It, it so you start the M-Tech in M -tech industrial metal. Industrial metal, metal casting, metal, metal joining casting, metal and metal metal forming. So mm. three divisions. Mm. So I was there. You for are, You are kind of yeah. leading the met yeah. material, metal With, of casting. With course, E.J. Ramachandran uh, mm -hmm. was the head of the department. So that is how master's degree M-Tech program in industrial metallurgy has started. But at the B-Tech level also were you teaching casting those days? Of course, there is one course called uh, Foundry Engineering oh, okay. in B.Tech uh -huh. and uh, I used to take, as soon as I came in 67, the first job they were given to me was mm. to teach uh, that mm. course and also there is an industrial design also was there. Okay. okay. So I used to give the uh, projects and... But really usually in IAC you see that the foundry area is under mechanical. Why did that not happen here in IIT Madras? Any you have some ideas? What? That uh, uh, I do not know because material science it can be, you see, so, it was so a metallurgy for some, metallurgy for some reason or other in BHU or uh, everywhere. Mm. Even even in uh, Indians of Science, there's a metallurgy department. Mm. But, but that was more academic and oriented yeah. possibly. Yeah. They thought that foundry is a, a typically an industrial kind of a thing. So, that could possibly. Mostly, yeah. Here it is mostly, uh, you know, there was a lot of emphasis on industry uh, from the beginning I heard here, particularly as you said, industrial metallurgy as an M-Tech starting. That itself would be uh, something which I, I don't think IAC, you can hear something of that nature. It's all about the vision of the heads of the department mm -hmm. because Professor A. Ramachandran, he was a heat transfer person. Okay. So in those days, in those days to visualize, so he was always about industry, he was industry. always telling, okay, if you have a master's degree, it's better to serve the industry, industry. To, get, to get the experience. Correct. So when I came over here, so six, six to seven, there was a faculty can register as a PhD, PhD program. Student. So I registered with Professor Eji mm. e. Ramachandran. Mm. So Professor Eji Ramachandran was the director, but still he used to help me mm. uh, because mm. he was a heat transfer person. My mm. problem was for the PhD program, thermal properties of mold materials using the yeah. uh, shell molding process, shell thermal molding. properties. You will uh, uh, appreciate, even today, determination of thermal properties is extremely useful for solidification, Sorry. simulation softwares. Definitely. Definitely. So, in those days he could visualize it mm -hmm. and Professor Seshadri, Professor E.J. Ramachandran was my uh, guide. Yeah. So, he gave me a lot the of... The whole stuff. microstructure evolution depends on the thermal properties, right? Thermal how, properties. How fast it is so, cooling. Yeah, Professor mm -hmm. E.J. Professor Ramachandran really helped me mm -hmm. uh, with uh, all yeah. my uh, PhD good. work, etc. So, that uh, I submitted uh, my thesis in 71 and then 
all the were you were you kind of first phd from the department yes i heard this yes. uh, i am the first phd from the metal metal <laughs> department <laughs> wow. you have so many distinctions <laughs> yeah. and uh, th Wonderful. then uh, then what happened was in uh, 71 uh. so there is an opportunity to all the uh, faculty will be sent to germany germany okay so uh, in germany gisser institute aachen aachen is the premier institute mm. in uh, in okay. in europe Mm. Before the Second World War, the only two institutions, Gisser Institute Aachen in Germany and Gisser Institute Krakow in Poland. These are the, the mm. best uh, foundry mm. research institutes. Mm. So uh, it's easy that? from uh, because a German collaboration. So I got an, uh, it was called DAAD. Yeah, that, so uh, German Academic correct. Exchange Service. Correct. So I got a, this one. So How I, long was that? About a year or two? Two years. Two it, years. Is, it was a two years. Were you married by then, Professor? I will tell you about that <laughs> one also. What happened was, in uh, 71 I went there because I submitted the thesis and left immediately. Uh -huh. So my viva was was not there. Oh, so you had to come back? What happened was, in 72, my reports came. I had to take the viva. And the no same... No Skype those days. <laughs> no, no Skype. <laughs> not only that one, uh, there was a advertisement for a assistant professor's post. Uh -huh. You cannot apply for assistant professor post unless you have a PhD. Submission of a thesis is, is not, not equal. So you have to complete your viva. Okay. I have to complete my viva, uh, then only you you'll can be, apply I, for I, a PhD. I can be considered. It can be absentia. You yeah, don't have to be. be it can be absentia. So what I did was, I uh, flew mm -hmm. from uh, mm. uh, Germany yeah. just to take the viva just to, just for a week or so. Uh, just for a week. At yeah. that time, uh, uh, I. Uh, Good. My, my wife. Wonderful. So we had our engagement at that Wonderful. time. That and was 72. 72. Then I, uh, then I went back again. Went back again. There was a, uh, there was a, the interviews for the assistant professors. I was promoted to be assistant. So professor. no, no, not even a telephonic interview. No. It was just in absentia. They just looked at your CV. Yeah. And then based on the CV. Yeah. Because okay. I was already this. so. Mm -hmm. this, so okay. I became an assistant professor. Okay. So. I became an associate professor in a similar fashion yeah. at IIT Kharagpur. Okay. So in absentia, I was in Japan uh, doing something there. Okay, nice to hear, professor. And uh, then, uh, then uh, 73, I 73 came back. Came we back. got married in, uh, in 73. Uh, 73. Mm -hmm. And uh, the next, I was my convocation, my marriage was there on 9th. Tenth was the convocation here. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. I had to take, we flew. So you uh, both flew. And, okay. Uh, then, uh, okay. then I got up. Um, at the time, Professor Pandalai was the. Uh, okay. So uh, you got your PhD uh, degree. Director and, and uh, then uh, uh, she was also there. Wonderful. So seventy-three, I got my. Then uh, I was busy because I learned quite a lot. Mm, my in, experience in Aachen, in Aachen, Aachen was very so good. sand. There was, there yeah. I worked with in sand. sand. So, Professor Soon helped me, Professor E.G. Ramachandran and Professor Soon, they helped to set up a laboratory. So, okay. uh, my laboratories in uh, sand testing were the best. Uh, people always talk about yeah, you. So, in when those days, somebody talks about yeah. Professor Roshan, it yeah. is sand. sand. So, <laughs> I was a, uh, I was yeah. a consultant. You seems uh, so to be a stalwart uh, in sand. Yeah, sand because I learned quite a lot yeah. about sand. So, I was knowing very much about sand. Sand mm -hmm. is a... Uh, sand also is a uh, is a basic raw material for making the castings. Okay. So sand has to be extremely uh, mm. pure in order to make mm. uh, those things. Mm. So I started my PhD students. Okay, mm. that is my start of PhD students because okay. I, once you can't guide a student unless you have a PhD. You have a PhD. So seventy three, I always say have a PhD. Okay. Then I had uh, so later on about twenty people got their PhD in different. Did the professor OP also do PhD with you? No, no, no. no. Both of us uh, did with procedure. Did procedure. Okay. Okay. So mm -hmm. then uh, the 73, 73 to uh, 77, uh, I was very busy working. My wife looked after my house. So mm -hmm. I was uh, my students. So I, my students were extremely good. Mm -hmm. Day and night we were working, etc. So quite a number of papers were getting published and uh, the students got there. 77, there were again, interviews for the professor's, professor's post, mm. professor's post. Mm. 
must be very young by that time, 35? Uh, 34, I was the youngest. 34, youngest professor. I, I was the youngest, uh, uh, one of the youngest professors. Uh, uh, well, maybe the youngest well, professor. Now it is tough. 34 yeah. is not easy to become a professor here. Usually it happens between 40 and uh, 45 or so. I was 39 when I became a professor. That itself was considered in Karakpur very early. <laughs> yeah, good so to hear 34, that. So 34, and then what happened was I applied for uh, uh, the Alexander von Humboldt Fellowship. Wonderful. So I got a junior. Very, <coughs> very prestigious fellowship. F fellowship I got and I had to go. Mm. And uh, then uh, uh, my interviews are there. So I got my letter of uh, professorship uh, in, you are selected uh, in, in June. That. And uh, next week I left for uh, Germany. Mm. And because of, because I'm a professor, so they gave me senior fellowship. They ah, upgraded ah, ah, my upgraded fellowship you. from uh, this Junior one to, to uh, senior, senior fellowship, Alexander. Where were you? You were again University in of Karlsruhe. No, Karlsruhe. I went to University of Karlsruhe, Karlsruhe. with Professor mm -hmm. Makarov. Mm -hmm. So 77 to 78, I was there, one and a half years. Although mm -hmm. two years, I came back. So 78, uh, we came back. Mm -hmm. As soon as I came back, Professor Narayan Murthy was the director. That ship is waiting for you, I, I heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he called me one day, uh, you want to take the headship, of course. Yeah. <laughs> then uh, Professor Srinivas Raghavan was the uh, head of the department. Previous head of the department. So I became 78. Mm -hmm. And 78 to 82, mm -hmm. it was a pleasure. Mm -hmm. It was a pleasure. Wonderful. Not that uh, it was a wonderful experience for me yeah. to lead the department. And uh, mm -hmm. head of the department's job is very interesting. And mm -hmm. you, have got, you can do quite a lot of uh, okay. Okay. contribution. Okay. So that is the period. Can you, can you just... Uh, uh, recall a few major contributions <coughs> that came from you as a head of the department in the department. We organized uh, several uh, seminars. One uh -huh. of the seminars was international seminars Very with good. Professor Krishna Sastri on, on solidification, heat transfer. So we uh, yeah. invited from all over the world. Uh -huh. the, uh, good, so good, there good. was a uh, metal processing uh, mm -hmm. seminar mm -hmm. that is uh, one of the contributions. Mm -hmm. And I also, I feel very glad one of my contributions is Metallurgy Seminar Hall. Uh, I, I, I just turned <laughs> up. Metallurgy uh, Seminar Hall was, uh, <laughs> I, I believe, was my, I, did, I, I took yeah. a good decision yeah, to yeah. convert. Because ground floor, we had to, there was no seminar hall. We used to uh, true, organize true, true, uh, true, true. any meetings, etc. Any, meet, so, any lectures for visitors. So, head of the department. Uh, Major contribution, very important uh, head, contribution. head of the department has the uh, resources yeah. and then he had the yeah. power. So, when lecture hall was converted, it was yeah. a good decision, I believe. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we are all uh, really enjoying that. Yeah. Of course, you may be possibly aware that uh, soon, in about four or five months from now, uh, most probably March, April, uh, we will be moving from the Mechanical Sciences block to a new academic complex where we have been provided with two floors. Uh, it's a five-story building where two floors are dedicated to metallurgy. So all the, most of the facilities from MSB will be moving there, including all the faculty members. We have about 30 faculty rooms there, four visiting faculty rooms, things like that. And uh, seminar hall we may have to part with. So just, so next year if you come, you would come to another seminar hall, not to MSB 104 anymore. That would belong to applied mechanics now. So applied mechanics do not have enough space and they are also growing in a big way. So the institute decided that MSB, that part, they will give it to mecha applied mechanics yeah. and then we move to a new building. Yeah. Yeah. Another contribution yeah. is uh, ability to attract uh, good faculty to the department. Thank Professor Padmanabhan. Ah, he joined during your time. Yeah, during the, when I was the. Who are the other faculty during your time who joined as faculty? S K Shadri. Ah, okay. another yeah. stalwart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corrosion. Yeah, yeah. Everybody yeah. knows. Yeah, he he, he yeah. was uh, he was good. there. So, Very good. so yeah. we had. Uh, uh, it was a good uh, this mm. one, attracting the good faculty and then provide and also the building the uh, infrastructure inside okay. the uh, department. You used to also work with a lot of foundry industries here. Uh, Another my contribution uh, I, I believe is we had a system of external registration uh -huh. from industry. Okay. So I had uh, uh, one. Uh, Dr. Seshadri, M.S. Seshadri uh, from uh, India Pistons. India Pistons. So he was uh, the chief, chief metallurgist. Correct, so correct. he did his PhD with me. Yeah. And uh, then uh, uh, when I was uh, um, doing my master, my engineering, uh -huh. my t how I went to India of Sciences, my metallurgy, the, the person who taught my metallurgy, Professor Rangaswamy, 
he did his masters in inner science. science he only told us yeah. it's very difficult to get into this so our interest was that's how i went to inner science true, true. and professor ranga was my dream when i was doing my undergrad also and professor ranga swami he was a uh, he was a professor but he wanted to become a head of the, uh, the phd so he did his phd with me my ah, my teacher okay. became my student your teacher became your student very strange so that is, very that is, unique that is, that is, uh, opportunity you had that that's is very great. nice that's and great. later on another two of my classmates from your university age. college of engineering yeah. they also got their phd with, with me yeah. and uh, then uh, from um, enur foundries now Enur i foundries. think it's called hinduja foundries Correct. enur foundries so there my student is now working there yeah. Yeah. two people dr venkobara uh -huh. so he did his phd with me yeah. and dr yeah. janagant so he yeah. did his phd totally about so 20 people did their wonderful, uh, wonderful. Uh, phd with me so that was a good industrial that's true that's true, uh, that's true. Uh, relationship yeah. so i i heard you know, for quite some time people used to say that you brought a very good industrial uh, face to the department Yeah. particularly in the foundry area yeah. it's amazing another major contribution is is very difficult to deal with magnesium hmm so so my student from D, we had a very good uh, relationship with the drdl mm hmm defense research and development correct in so Delaware. one of my students dr sundar rajan mm -hmm. <coughs> who was the uh, who did his masters here mm -hmm. he did his project uh, work with, with me yeah. he became a scientist in drdl drdl so he wanted to do his uh, uh, phd so on a, on a magnesium alloy at that time dr abdul kalam uh -huh. was the director of uh, okay. uh, drdl, DRDL. And, uh, later on of course air vice marshal narayan and also uh, mm -hmm. was there they were all interested in magnesium oh, because wonderful. it's very difficult to import very magnesium good. Very good. Uh, alloys yeah, plus true. at that time they were developing prithvi prithvi ah they wanted prithvi a lighter one mm -hmm. it is a magnesium correct, casing correct. is a magnesium correct. casting so i was a consultant to drdl mm -hmm. so they took me to mm -hmm. uh, incidentally sundar rajan later uh, became director of nit trichy i know i know i am i'm in touch i am in touch no recently actually dr cgk nair who was also a student from here who was a chairman of hl he is talking of starting a big uh, you know uh, initiative on magnesium because magnesium somehow slowly died down in india so the particularly not just the casting of magnesium but extractive uh, metallurgy of magnesium and then taking it in a big way because both aerospace and also automotive industry are thinking in a big way to bring magnesium into their uh, you know components so so i think your initial contributions are going to be useful now yeah so yeah. i was very happy <coughs> good good one day mm -hmm. i stayed in uh, hyderabad for mm -hmm. 10 days in mm -hmm. drdl mm -hmm. in, the, in their campus until the casting is uh, poured and uh, everything good. so that i believe is a my i was very happy to be associated okay. with that project uh, for the for the prithvi so mm -hmm. that was the this, okay. so but uh, at some stage you moved to us i heard yeah. okay so when was this professor what happened was uh, uh, i knew for the industry to be this one uh, iso 9000 is uh, very important mm -hmm. so i had a you know, industrial consultancy mm -hmm. center so at that time professor raju was the uh, mm -hmm. dean of uh, okay. the industrial consultancy also so uh, to get a, a auditor certification mm -hmm. so you had to pay about 20000 rupees in those days oh, oh, okay. <laughs> okay so i requested whether i can use my uh, industrial consultancy money my, my own this so he said you can go to delhi so i went there to delhi uh -huh. to get certified, certified as an iso 9000 auditor auditor uh -huh. okay i am i am a lead auditor so you lead, are lead auditor leader. course uh -huh. so that is a, this one. okay plus i also had at the time solidification simulation i had my small packages etc uh -huh. so i used to go to us to present my pay papers yeah, etc so one of my friends uh, when, uh, when he came over here just gave my resume just see whether there is an opportunity mm -hmm. before that actually i applied uh, to one university in canada okay. i had an offer mm -hmm. okay to go 
But meanwhile, uh, Maynard Steel Casting Company, they were looking for a person okay. who is familiar with certification, simulation software, simulation. Okay. plus they also wanted an ISO 9000 auditor skills. Ah. Uh -huh. I had both of them. Okay. So just I, so I took two years of uh, sabbatical in okay. those days. So I took the sabbatical. And Which the, year was that? 1993. 93. Okay. So 1993 we went there and uh, then... So 26 uh, years after you joined here? Yeah. Okay. And uh, mm -hmm. then after I went there, so my children were there, so they wanted to stay, uh, stay over there. So then, uh, so, so I, I retired. So mm -hmm. in 1995, okay. I, I retired. After two years and of then, sabbatical. Uh, so mm -hmm. stay, stay put over there in mm -hmm. the... I, I was a, a director of quality, you know, I have been the chief metallurgist for mm -hmm. the last uh, five years. Yeah, my wife yeah. also works with me, okay. so and so it's she good. develops all the documentation yeah. for... So now it's so 25 now. years you have yeah. been there. Yeah. So, so what was the major difference that you found when compared to the industry here and the industry there? Yeah. What I notice is uh, the industries remain the same, but mm -hmm. uh, from the ac academic, if you want to see, uh, especially in steel, uh -huh. Here, metal casting and metal joining. Steel, metal joining is, is a part of casting. There's yes. nothing like uh, mm -hmm. metal joining separate and uh, metal mm -hmm. uh, casting. So, uh, and heat treatment. Heat treatment. So, as a chief metallurgist, uh, my job is one third is uh, to specifications, specifications, okay. specifications, specifications. That is it. Mm -hmm. The second one is metal joining. Metal joining. Even uh, how, how to get a qualified procedure that mm. itself is a correct we don't uh, teach in academy. True, today true, if true. i were to be a professor i believe uh, it will be slightly i will design a uh, program in such a way ideally suited for the industry mm. so the metal casting program metal casting. so incorporate uh, metal, joining metal joining and uh, teach specifications because okay. ASTM specifications sure. and the din specification is all about specifications mm. and uh, and then heat treatment Heat treatment here as a separate, as a mm. metal, mm. metal casting, heat treatment is a separate. It's all about heat treatment. Steel mm. is nothing but obviously, heat treatment. Obviously. So uh, that is mm. the, mm. and yeah. of course uh, now, now with the industry in uh, uh, US, the only thing is we have to make money, that's it. Yeah. In, in, uh, they, they don't care who you are, what, as long as you generate wealth. Yeah, sure. You generate wealth only if you can help the company to make money. Make money. So you yes. should have the skills of uh, how to help the good company. Good quality products. Good quality products. And then less defects, less defect. more productivity, yeah. and more like that. That's you raised it. That right. is uh, one of the things. Productivity is the key. Key, obviously. Productivity. And uh, you may not know, many people, many industries, don't even have the metrics of how do you define the productivity, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Many people just man hours per ton, mm -hmm. so the, mm -hmm. that itself there is a quite a lot of scope. You may not mm -hmm. believe mm -hmm. that on average, e e US industry or any industry lose about five to 10% of their revenue in quality costs. Quality costs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's an enormous, a $30 mm -hmm. billion dollar industry mm -hmm. is Correct. about t three billion per three year. Billion per year. Okay. So, I, uh, mm. I made a uh, presentations and uh, publications, mm -hmm. etc. Mm -hmm. How to improve the productivity. Mm -hmm. So I'm also I used to teach Six Sigma. You are also Bursa. associated with some academic institutions there in US. I am an adjunct professor in University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Good. I work so, one day in a week. So I work oh, four days in a day. Four days in the industry so, and one week. So, yeah. so what happened was uh, the Magma Soft I have been using for the last 25 years. So mm -hmm. the president of Magma Soft said, I'll give five licenses. Each license costs $80,000. Mm -hmm. So he gave five licenses to UWM provided Russian teaches the solidification. Okay. So that's how I went there. So I teach uh, solidification simulation for mm -hmm. the uh, graduate students mm -hmm. and undergraduate students mm -hmm. and also the uh, software, I, ma I, I, software I maintain. Yes. And yes. then I also uh, assist uh, the students for advisor, PhD student, so I have a student working on fracture toughness of uh, low alloy steels uh, mm -hmm. using mm -hmm. uh, in mining industry. Mm -hmm. There is another project also I help is surface alloying. Mm -hmm. See, laser surface alloying particularly? No, it's, it's no. not a laser surface. See, the uh, valve bodies are uh -huh. generally WCB castings, a plain okay. carbon steel. Uh -huh. But 
when the water flows, the corrosion is a major issue. Uh -huh. Stainless steel is very expensive. Very expensive. So is it possible to surface alloy? Surface with alloy. It? So we are working with almost, su we are successful mm -hmm. using casting process. Oh, okay. In good. the sense, we take a course and then uh, uh, apply, a, taking a regular wash and put nickel powder, chromium powder, and those so things, etc., and then cast it. Yes. So it will uh, absorb only the surface. Only on the surface. Okay. Very good. So hydro, how to change the hydrophobicity uh -huh. of uh, this? Very so good. botany. So I asked <laughs> because how to create a hydrophobic surface. Surface. So I asked uh, my yeah. wife one day this yeah. one, etc. So you know the leaves. Yeah, so yeah, lotus sure. leaves, etc. Uh, nanotechnology, yeah. that's a big thing. Yeah. People talk of self-cleaning. For example, on these glasses, people do what is, uh, we work to some extent, nano-titania coatings for bringing super hydrophobic city on surfaces. This is another new area. Yeah. Good. So yeah. another contribution which I made to US foundry industry is, <coughs> uh, when I went there, my daughter is a a lotus notes specialist. Mm -hmm. So before going itself, I was working on expert systems over here. Okay. I had my students working mm -hmm. on expert systems. So then I went to American Foundry Society. I used the uh, expert system using lotus notes. Mm -hmm. And uh, then <clears throat> they were very much impressed. So in 2001, they gave me award of scientific merit uh -huh. based upon mm -hmm. my work on uh, very uh, good. this expert systems. expert systems. And uh, later on, uh, I was working my son, so he is a IT, so he mm -hmm. developed a learning management system mm -hmm. for American Foundry Society online courses I started using okay. his. Very good, very so good. So then uh, they were impressed, mm -hmm. so they gave me uh, the go AFS gold medal, the highest yes. uh, yeah. award of uh, AFS in 2006 mm -hmm. very good. as a gold medal and also CMI director's award mm -hmm. the same year. Yeah. So, two awards I got from so. So, you so. also contributed a lot to teaching through online courses. Online courses. So, so, they are very popular, I heard. Yeah. 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 So, good. those are the mm. con my contributions to the mm. US foundry industry. Mm. But uh, I believe my major contribution to the, uh, my profession is my invention of my steel foam. Mm. Yeah. So, I you got. You were talking about it in the morning. Uh, yeah, yeah. I got my patent in. Uh, uh, April 2017. Oh, it has, last yeah, year. and uh, it has got enormous amount of uh, applications Definitely. in uh, both in uh, the defense, uh, the yeah. naval, yeah. army, and uh, structures. Now, having worked in aluminum foams, I know everybody was waiting someone to make a steel foam, yeah. and that's going to really remarkably change yeah. uh, the whole field. Yeah. So uh, now my intent true. is uh, how to see now that I have got the material. Yeah. Now how to. Uh, have the components uh, mm. made use of because mm -hmm. uh, I, um, I, w I would like to see this material is extensively used mm -hmm. industry for mm -hmm. the benefit of uh, mm -hmm. it will save particularly the millions defense, of uh, lives it, it yeah. is a is a life saving material correct, correct. so the only thing is they have to use it mm -hmm. so that uh, so my students also are working mm -hmm. On uh, armor uh, plates, all those yeah, things. Yeah, no? armor plates to uh, right. using. Uh, we did some work simulation. recently uh, and uh, using a nano, um, you know, steel. We call it as where you uh, refine the microstructure uh, through heat treatment. Of course, thermomechanical processing bring a nano bionic kind of structure and improve the fracture toughness to such an extent that it becomes like a, a much better bulletproof material uh, in terms of shock absorption, energy absorption. So, so you are trying to do it with foam, that's amazing. Yeah. So, the, there is no limitation to the uh, steel material, I can make in any material, uh, starting from the hardness of uh, 140 BHN Wonderful. up to 500 BHN, we can have uh, up to even 50% uh, of the lighter weight. It's not only has, people have been aiming at lightweight steel hmm. for, it, for the energy, but Obviously. it has got both lightweight and also energy absorption. Hmm. Not only energy absorption, but also the so sound, automotive sound industry absorption. also yeah, yeah. is amazingly yeah. going to use it. Very good. So and I heard that you can also make it graded. Huh? It's a gradient uh, oh, density also. Gradient on one side density. solid, Very and good. the other side uh, oh. foam. So we are also now that trying to be. roll it. It gives a lot of structural stability also. Yeah, yeah. That will be very good. Anything which is the, requires a bending strength because uh -huh. this has got a higher stiffness mm -hmm. in bending. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a very useful material for the 
benefit now of Now that the you have been society. associated for almost five decades with uh, foundry industry, how did foundry industry change in India and in US? How do you, from your own eyes, uh, do you see a major change uh, the way people used to do foundry, for example? One thing is uh, the development of simulation software has become... Uh, the so-called e-foundry now people talk about, right? A uh, lot uh, of softwares. Software, but the only thing is, again, I did my thermal properties in 1970. Mm -hmm. Even today, there is one of the limitations. Okay. All the software, there are many software companies. You need to give inputs to now, these softwares. How do you know uh, the thermal properties okay, which they have uh, used? Okay. So, there, there is always a scope for improvement. Okay. So that is why now you need somebody to measure these thermal properties thermal. so that you can give them as input parameters. Input parameters. Correct. So even liquidus and solidus temperatures. Yes, how do you know that the new alloys that you are developing? How, yeah. How do you know the mm. density? Correct. In order to just measuring the density, so that will be a wonderful research program. Mm. Evening, I'll be telling you about <laughs> what all research density. can be. Research can be. Even you know, surface so energy. Things. Surface energy is yeah. another major yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so mm -hmm. that is, but one thing is still I believe industries uh, still have not figured it out how to uh, reduce the de defects. Defects, yeah. Because the sure. process variables are too so many. So you have to, too many you need to control me measurement. measurement. So the other thing is uh, which uh, I always uh, say, so I, I work in the, uh, in the UWM, uh, I am a IBM industrial advisory member. Ah, so, uh, there is an academic initiative member, mm -hmm. my daughter is IBM business partner, so, mm -hmm. so he introduced me to IBM SPSS modeler. Mm -hmm. Now, the all it depends upon data, mm -hmm. big data people talk. Okay. So, in foundry industry, one of the weaknesses is we are not a data centric industry mm -hmm. still, true, to the extent true, true, what true. is needed. True. So what we require is uh, how to collect the how to collect the data and then use the data. Use the now data. people are talking of artificial intelligence, neural networks. So that also can play a significant role in foundry also. Exactly. That is mm. that is that is how can you predict uh, the properties the property of a uh, uh, of a material? Correct. Neural Different. neural mm. networks correct. and uh, the sometime back long back trees. one of my students worked on grain size prediction using neural networks based on a lot of data that we generate. So when you do an inoculation for a given amount of inoculation for a known alloy that you are putting in, what is the grain size? Can we predict it without uh, uh, doing an experiment? Yeah. So that... Mm. So I am developing a course on uh, mm. predictive analytics in manufacturing using IBM SPSS model. Actually oh. on December 23rd, I am giving a webinar for AFS Okay. on predictive analytics in, ma in metal casting industry. Metal casting. Wonderful. Wonderful. So that is, a, I, I believe, it's going to be the future. In US also, this uh, foundry industry has changed significantly. Do you think there is a major change? Yeah, there is a, mm. a, a major change in the sense they have got reduced. If you compare, <laughs> uh, the foundry is... Uh, I, will, I will tell you, my, my own, com the US is all about cost of production uh -huh. and uh, selling price. Okay. So, it's all about global economy. So, if, they f if you find that somewhere else it is easier to cast uh, or uh, make, make it the cheaper. component, make it cheaper, so you go there. If the same component anywhere in the world, you can get it cheaper and uh, same quality, same, same quality. Same quality, obviously. Then they will go. So, but For example, in Chennai, you would possibly know that we have Hyundai. Uh, plant, we have, Horn, uh, we have uh, Ford, my Ford car is made in uh, Chennai. So like that you have so many of these industries coming to India also for one of these reasons possibly. Cost so, of production. So in US labor costs are high. That's okay. So, that. so you cannot compete with, uh, so the only thing is you have to be uh, on the forefront of the technology. technology. So only the Value addition somehow. Value addition, especially that is why we say you be good in data collection mm -hmm. and reduce the reduce the quality cost. Reduce then the only cost. you can make money. True. But True. in a, in a, our company, we make a large uh, uh, lip cam for the mining machinery, large cast gears and uh, quality etc. I don't think uh, other people will be able to have the same amount of a uh, mm -hmm. skills. Whatever said and done. Certain things cannot be learned only by books. It's by true, true, so true, true. 
with a 100 year old company myself for 20 year 25 years working in a steel we have so much amount of a uh, personal knowledge about the materials so this is very difficult to have so you may have money to buy the equipment true. but you don't have the people true. who have the skills of skills. the knowledge to make uh, the cash even uh, if you see all the specifications specifications uh, are drawn by mechanical engineers uh -huh. those are the people who put the specifications our job as the foundry engineer is to make a component with the defect free mm -hmm. with the properties as the designer has intended mm -hmm. now the question is how does the designer put those specifications fracture toughness was not a specification would put earlier. on the drawing mm -hmm. earlier but now, now it is now slowly coming up yeah. There is so let's come back to IIT Madras. Uh, you have been visiting IIT Madras uh, at least once in a year, once in two years. Do you see a significant change from your time to now in terms of, let's say... Uh, the only this, uh, what I could uh, see is... Uh, teaching or research, any, any one of these friends, do you see a significant change? Like people like you who have been working on nanometer, I don't think at that time we, we, yeah, we, we have um, was not we, we had people, yeah. so you have at least uh, you have true, true. started a, a new area. Yeah, yes. um, for some reason or other in India, the foundry uh, uh, courses are not, uh, yes. uh, we don't know. The same thing in, yeah. in US also, yeah. for example, yeah. in Madison, earlier it was one of the best, but uh, it's no. not there. True. It depends upon the people. True, true. So new areas come yeah. up, old areas. It all depends upon demand. And demand. Uh, yeah. Whereas uh, somehow foundry industry has not been recruiting many people. So slowly, you know, it's uh, a little come down. That's yeah. true. And more people are now going more into, as I was telling you, e-foundry. So now we have courses where you demonstrate or uh, you do uh, through simulation, do a casting experiment rather than doing a real casting experiment. So our uh, classes also, we introduce that to some extent so that students are also excited to see. Uh, but, but eventually, uh, in what industry requires is still, I believe, there is the an enormous people. amount of a, a skill is required. Skill. How to make a good casting with good properties? <laughs> There's always a scope. Then there are not many people. There are not Definitely. many people who are Definitely. knowledgeable Definitely. in steel metal cast, steel metallurgy. True, true, true. Yeah. Where are your students now? I mean, uh, uh, do any of them who have become some stalwarts anywhere, like like the way you are? <laughs> For example, Dr. Sundar Rajan is a good example. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, was, example. Uh, he was the. Uh, and then uh, Dr. Venkobara was there, yes. so, uh, and then Dr. Seshadri, uh, so possibly he is retired now. He is retired. Yeah, okay. Dr. Venkobara also. There is one more Janaga. gentleman in India Pistons by name Gopal, who keeps yeah. on talking about you yeah, a lot. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah? him very well. Yeah, yeah, he is yeah. also a very senior member, yeah, yeah, yeah. but he remembers yeah, you so yeah, well. Yeah. Yeah. There is another Gopal who was there who was in TVS. TVS, so, uh, TVS yes. Uh, he also okay. got his PhD correct, with me. Even there is one gentleman by name Mahadevan who also talks yeah. a lot about yeah, you. Mahadevan also. Yeah. So we gave yeah. them because when I was here, we developed a squeeze casting, uh, this mm. one. So they took the... Correct, uh, correct, correct. So do you also remember your campus life you, uh, here? Uh, we, how was that? I was telling uh, my wife, we thoroughly enjoyed our uh -huh. campus wife. OATs and Saturdays, OATs, we used Saturday to go movies. Because, yeah, it was Nobody nice, can forget. Yeah. 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 It was a very nice... Wonderful, uh, this. Wonderful. And Just your like children grew here? Or I, have two, I have two children. Mm -hmm. My daughter completed her in, in Vanavani. Vanavani, yeah. And, uh, and also, uh, I was the chairman of the Vanavani school, school. between 82 and 84. After okay. became my after head of the headship. department. 82 yeah. to 84, 84, I was the chairman of the mm -hmm. Vanavani school. That mm -hmm. is a wonderful mm -hmm. experience. Good, excellent yeah. school. Mm. Good, good, good. Any, any message that you have? to the younger people about foundry or in general about academics? Yeah, the only thing which I uh, tell all my uh, students is <coughs> corporations don't hire you for what you know. We hire you for what we need. Mm, so your degree is only a uh, necessary condition yes. for employment, but not a sufficient condition. Sufficient condition. So what you need to know is <coughs> you need to figure is. it out what we require in foundry, what do you require? We require just the metallurgical background, good metallurgical background. 
and uh, the next one is uh, you require uh, the uh, heat treatment uh, background and then uh, you require uh, the industrial engineering background mm -hmm. and uh, uh, then even uh, cost accounting mm -hmm. cost accounting is extremely uh, mm -hmm. is, is is important mm -hmm. so all these skills you need to have somehow you have to develop these they may the, not be taught in the actual classroom yeah. so but one has to develop to really become successful in order to so those are yes. the skills so it's just not uh, the yes. and then why mechanical engineering metal metallurgy Mechanical engineers generally they will uh, know little more about how to read the drawings, mm. the, the drawings. Yes, that's true. Although now the, all the CAD packages have come, correct, but still correct. in foundry you should be able to read the drawing. Correct, correct. So those that skills. Is. So foundry is actually a blend of both mechanical and metallurgical and engineering. So it's not only either yeah, meta yeah, mecha definitely, metallurgical definitely. or metallurgical. Definitely, definitely. Heat treatment is is a part of a, yeah, a, a, this. You will be surprised to get one. Welding is extremely important, yeah, not a, you cannot underestimate. Definitely. You, to get one procedure qualified, it may cost about 3000 to 5000 dollars, mm -hmm. just procedure qualification. Right. And I can't touch uh, my casting with a weld rod mm -hmm. unless I have got a qualified procedure, procedure for the welding. For the mm -hmm. welding. Correct. Thank you, Professor. It was wonderful meeting you and uh, very nice that you have been able to share your experience in not only in IIT Madras but also your 20s five years of experience overseas and this is amazing to talk to you, a stalwart like you. Thank you, Professor. You are welcome. I wish to thank you, Professor Murthy. I wish no, to thank, thank Mamata uh, and the whole uh, heritage Mr. Group. Kumaran, Mr. Rajaraman for giving this opportunity to be with you today. Thank you thank very you. much.